How does it feel to own an electric car in the Midwest of America? How do you charge? How far can you go, especially in the cold weather? And is the public charging network good enough for a road trip? Hi everybody, this is Electrified Veronica. We're having the first sunny day after a very long and cold winter here in Wisconsin. I always wanted to have a horse and finally I got one. It's a Mustang. A month ago, I bought the Ford Mustang Mach-E GT 2022. It's cyber orange. I've driven a lot of electric vehicles and last summer I got the chance to test drive the Mustang Mach-E for the first time and I fell in love with this car. In this first month, I already drove 2,500 miles including a road trip to Detroit and I want to share my experience with you. The first reaction I typically get when I tell people that I own an electric Mustang is that they say well this is not really a Mustang but I really love the look of this car and it's also pretty spacious. It's a small SUV, you can carry stuff around, you can do road trips with it so for us it's really the perfect size. This car is all-wheel drive, one EXL in the front, one EXL in the back. By the way, you can buy this e-motor and we were looking into that for our Jeep conversion, but then decided to go with Cascadia Motion. We have 91 kilowatt hour of usable battery capacity in this car. The modules are made of LG pouch cells and they are arranged along the floor. The car is certified with an EPA range of 270 miles, that's 430 kilometers. So far, so in this first month of owning this car, we have not seen 270 miles. We have seen a maximum of 250 to 255 miles. It has been rather cold here and we know that the battery performance suffers a little bit in cold temperatures. And I'm really looking forward now, it's getting warmer, spring and summer, how much mileage we will get. Those of you who have seen my other videos know that I'm a huge fan of Frank's front trunk. The only thing I didn't realize is that for this Mustang, you cannot open the front from the outside. So you still have to pull the hood latch release. This is one thing I really liked about the Rivian. You could open it from the outside and I really hope the Ford F-150 Lightning will do the same. You also have to close it manually, which is old fashioned compared to Rivian. Only two times? <laughs> Normally it takes me like five. This is the beautiful key of my Mustang. And this is how I open the door. You can also use your phone as a key, but I haven't tried it yet. The interior of this car is absolutely beautiful. The quality is great, the materials feel really good, and my absolute highlight is the sunroof. One thing I noticed about startups like Rivian or Tesla is that they don't have a start and stop button anymore. Now, every time I come back into my car, I'm like, why do I need the start and stop button? Especially if I get out. Watch this. See, I forgot to turn the car off. The charge port for this car is on the left front side. It has the regular AC charging, then there is DC fast charging, and you can see the state of charge from the outside of your car, which I like a lot. Let me show you how I charge my car at home. This is our level two charger from Emporia. It plugs into the wall at 240 volts. A full charge, so 270 miles, take 10 hours with this charger. Of course, public DC fast charging is way faster. So let's go to a public charging station. So this is a 150 kilowatt fast charger. <laughs> it is so cold. It's almost April. So we're charging now? Yes, we're charging now. Now for every trip that you're doing, you can see where the energy goes. Climate use, driving, accessories, and external temperature. This together with the energy that you're using for heating up the cabin is why you're losing range in cold temperatures. On our last road trip to Detroit, it was really cold. It was snowing outside. And of course we used the climate control and we ended up with around 210 miles compared to the EPA certified 270 miles. I found an OBD2 dongle that transmits the vehicle and battery data to my phone so I can see it on my app. It allows me to see battery data real time while we are driving and charging and I will use this data to do some really cool analysis. Stay tuned for that. There is one feature in this car that I thought I didn't really need it but I was surprised about how much I love it. Hands-free driving. You know you have cruise control, speed control but then also kind of automatic steering. The only thing it doesn't do is changing lanes. You have to have your eyes on the road all the time. 
It took me a little bit of time to generate trust into the system, but I tried it out several times on road trips and it is really convenient. It almost feels like you're bonding to the car even more. It's really fun to drive this car. It's absolutely quiet and it kind of feels good because you're not actively polluting the environment. Well, is that actually true? As most of my audience is reminding me almost every day, it's very important where the electricity comes from to charge this car. In Wisconsin right now, we do have a little more than 10% renewable energy, but most of the electricity to power that car comes from a local coal plant. The interesting thing about electric vehicles is that I personally can do something to improve that by adding solar to my house. We have an opportunity with electric vehicles that we can charge them from sun wind and other renewable energy. Now the hope of course is that also the public charging infrastructure and the local grid will be updated sooner or later transforming more towards renewable energy. So far after this first month I am really happy with my Mustang here in the Midwest. The driving experience is amazing, home charging is absolutely seamless for me and also the public charging infrastructure for the places that I went to you know Chicago, Madison, Milwaukee, Michigan was really good. In fact, I was actually surprised at how many charging stations there are already here in the Midwest because you don't see a lot of electric cars yet. Of course, you have to get a little bit used to it. It requires a change of mindset to drive an electric vehicle compared to a gas-powered car. In general, I'm really happy with the range that I have. I don't need faster charging. I don't have range anxiety. I rather prefer to talk about range happiness. Let me know what you think about all that and leave some questions down in the comment section for a first-time EV owner. Stay tuned and talk to you soon. Bye!